So I can pulse it, have a momentary switch in one direction, or I can turn it on and hold it on, go in the other direction. And I can do that to all of them. I did another video on solenoid packs a while back, how to test them, what to look for, using just an ohm meter and a pigtail if you can to apply 12 volts to these things. In that video, I mentioned that I have a box that makes it really easy for me to do this all at once. And this is actually it. Um, this box, it's a lot like the DTR box that I use for testing DTRs to make sure I got everything, everything's working and to make sure it's set properly. Uh, I did another video on that where I can, sh or I show what happens when it's not aligned properly. I think some things that could happen. But basically, the DTR box just checks ohms across seven different pairs of pins. Um, that's all that does. The solenoid box does that. It checks the ohms across, measures the ohms across all five solenoids, but then it also applies 12 volts to all the solenoids. And then I can engage them all individually or all together here by these switches. So the way I do that is obviously it hooks right up to the solenoid pack, but there's also a 12 volt port here that I hook up to a battery here at the bench. A wall wart usually doesn't have enough amps if you wanna if you wanna engage multiple solenoids, uh, unless you have like a five amp wall wart. But I just use a small battery. I have a little battery here for my wife's Honda, and uh, works just fine. So that's how I get the 12 volts here. I have uh, normally this LED lights up when I have 12 volts. I keep burning these things out. I'm probably not wiring it up right, but I don't even I don't even care. But this lead is long enough, so if I'm ever in the field underneath a truck, I can hook up to the solenoid pack and I can grab 12 volts right off of the starter. So here we go. Just like the DTR, we got a switch here that turns on the ohmmeter. Let's hook this up. And I can go through each of the five solenoids here. So just like the other one, I'm gonna start low. So for solenoid one, that's showing 19 to 20. Same 19 to 20. These, these are always gonna measure out like roughly anywhere from 19 to 20. It's when you get really low, that's when these things are usually burnt out. Here's the torque converter at 13, torque converter uh, solenoid. And then here's the EPC between three and five. Now, I have another position if I go further, it takes the ohmmeter out of the out of the picture and now it's applying 12 volts to all five solenoids, just like the computer would. The computer applies 12 volts constant and then it switches the grounds. And that's what we're doing here. So now I can energize any one of the five or I can energize them all together. These switches are uh, two way, There's, it's momentary in one direction on off in the other. So here's a shift solenoid one on the momentary side, but I can also just flip it down and run power non-stop. I do that in case I wanna flush this thing out. If I feel like it's sticky or the ball's hanging up, I can pump fluid back and forth. I'll show you how I do that in a second, but that's what that, that's what that position's for. And then I can just go back to pulsing it. And they all do that. They all work pretty much the same. So what happens when there's a problem? Well, if I have a sticky solenoid, I can try to clean it here, just like as is on the bench top. If, uh, if I have no luck doing that, I can get pretty serious with it. I have a plate here. If I hook up a regulator here, I can apply shop air to the inputs of all five solenoids. And while I'm doing that, I can use the box to open and shut them. And then I can put whatever I want on the other side. I can put pressure gauges here to see what's coming out, if there's any leak, any uh, leakage, or, you know, just to see what's coming out. Now, these are the same paper gaskets. These are very leaky. Uh, 
is what they want us to use. So this just goes together like that. I have a bunch of nuts here. I can tighten the nuts down and bolt this to the plate. So now when I'm working on this, it'll sit like that. I'll have the air coming in the side here. And then all five solenoid packs have air on them. These are the outlets, so nothing should be coming out of there. If something is coming out of there, then I know I have one that's not returning to shut. If I want to pump fluid back and forth through them, I can do that um, using the box. I can put some fluid down in there, and then I can blow it all out. I can blow it the other direction. I can do it whatever I want to do. It usually doesn't get that deep. I've had a couple that I've done that way, but normally, you know, at that point, they just go into the box and uh, they just become part solenoids. And I just build a good one out of a bunch of old ones and keep them going. So that is kind of the advanced way of checking solenoid packs. Having stuff like this really helps. It helps me get through everything quickly and accurately and before I send a, uh, a new transmission out to a customer.